Hello and welcome to Beat the Nation GCSE Foundation Week 7 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation, I hear you say? Well, thousands of students all around the country have been taking my GCSE Foundation quizzes on my diagnosticquestions.com website. And I've gone into one of these quizzes and I've chosen three questions. And they're the three questions you see in front of you now. Uh, but they're not just any old three questions. Oh, no, no, no. These are the three worst answered questions from that particular quiz. And I've got five challenges for you. So challenge number one is can you get each of these questions correct? And that's going to be easier said than done because, as I say, these are difficult questions that students are struggling with. Challenge two, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered question is? And then I wonder if you can predict for each of these questions what the most popular choice of wrong answer is. And then I wonder if you can get into the minds of students who are getting these questions wrong and explain why they might choose each of these popular wrong answers. And then finally, imagine you were sat next to somebody who was convinced that their wrong answer was right. How would you convince them not only that you're right, but also, in a nice way of course, that they're wrong? So what I suggest you do now is you pause this video and work your way through these three questions with these five challenges in mind. And then when you're ready, press play again and we'll go through them together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one. Right, let's go through these, but to build up drama, let's do them in reverse order. So the least worst answered question out of these three is this question here on standard form. So we've got to multiply together these uh, these two numbers in standard form. Um, I'll show you the long way of doing this, and that'll hopefully help us see why a quicker way works. So let's write these out as normal numbers and non-standard form. So let's start with this one. 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 4. Well, that means 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 1 would be 50, but by 10 to the power 2 would be 500, 10 to the power 3 would be 5,000, 10 to the power 4, we get 50,000. We'll do a similar technique with 4 times 10 to the power of 3. So we get 4 times 10 to the power 1 would be 10, uh, 40, 10 to the power 2, 400, 10 to the power 3. Okay, so we've got 50,000 multiplied by 4,000. So we're going to do 5 multiplied by 4, which is going to give us 20. And then for each of these not zeros is going to make our answer 10 times bigger. So we've got a 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros here. 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros there. And we've got 1, 2, 3 zeros there. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we've got a pretty big number. How, well, what is this number here? I like to put these in groups of 3. So we've got 0, 0, 0. We've got this group of three, zero, zero, zero. And then we've got this group of three, two, zero, zero. Wow, we've got 200 million, I think that is. But the answer's got to be back in standard form. So we've got two times 10 to the power of, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. Two times 10 to the power of eight, which is answer A. So that's quite a long way of doing it. And you don't want to be doing that every time, particularly if these numbers, these powers are big. Imagine it was five times 10 to the power of 26 or something like that. You'd be writing zeros all day long. So this is where you can use a bit of a shortcut and it's related to the technique we've used there. You can say five multiplied by four is 20. And then think what we did there. We had four zeros and we had three zeros and we added them together to give us our seven zeros here. Plus, of course, we have that zero from the 20. So we can add our powers here. So we can end up with 20 times 10 to the power of four plus three, which gives us seven. And then all we've got to do is remember that in standard form, this first number here is always between one and 10. So we've just got to remember to convert it. So if we make that 10, 20, 10 times smaller to balance it up, we've got to make our power one bigger to make our answer 10 times bigger. So you end up with two multiplied by 10 to the power of eight. I'm not a big fan of remembering rules in mathematics. There's so many rules you have to remember. So if you can, if you can get your head around why that rule works, then you can kind of figure it out as you go through, if that makes sense. So I think the answer to this is A. Let's see if we're right first. Yes, we are. But look at that. Only 37% of students got that answer correct. By far, the most popular wrong answer is B, 36. Now, it's close. 2 times 10 to the power 7. But where's it gone wrong? Well, look, look what's happened here. Five times four is 20, and then they've added four plus three. So they've done it right to add to get your powers, but what they've forgotten about, of course, is that when you do five times four and you get 20, 
you've got to bring this zero into play. It's kind of, it's like an extra power of 10 that gets added on, which is why you end up with to the power of eight, not to the power of seven. Whew. Tricky start. And we're only just getting started here. So here's your second least worst answered question. And it is this one here, an area of a triangle. To work out the area of the triangle, you do. Right, how do we work out the area of a triangle? So the area of a triangle is equal to a half times the base times the height. Or some people like to think of it as base times height divided by two. Both exactly the same thing. Now that's all well and good, but we've got to know what on earth our base is and what on earth our height is. Because it's, e it's easier said than done sometimes. Well, let's look on this, this, this diagram. Now it's not too much of a surprise that our height is going to be equal to three. So our height is three. That's fine. The, the perpendicular height. But what's our base? Is it four or is it six? Well, our base is the base of the triangle itself that we're, we're measuring. So our base is four, not that six. Now, again, as I said, I don't like rules in math. So how are we supposed to understand that? How are we supposed to know that? Well, a good way to think about this is to picture what would happen with this triangle. If we took this point here, oh, sorry, and we just shifted it in a little bit, we'd end up with a triangle that looks like something like that. And that base would still be four centimeters. The area would still be the same. It doesn't matter what we do with this point. It doesn't matter where we drag this point to. The area stays exactly the same. But that six, all that six tells us is how far we drag that point across that way. It has no impact on the area itself. So when we're thinking about the base of a triangle, the base is the actual distance of that base of that triangle. It's nothing to do with the width between a far point on the right and a far point on the left. So you end up with a half multiplied by four multiplied by three. So I think the answer to this is A. Now, again, that should be a relatively straightforward question. All it's asking you to do is work out, you know, the area of a triangle, remember a formula. But unless you're challenged to think about these kind of slightly weird looking triangles, that's where problems can happen. And as we see there, 27% of students, oh, whoa, 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 what have I done there? Sorry, 27% of students thought the answer to this one was B. Um, and there you go. Uh, we know the triangle isn't fully done, so we place the four with six, but it's, it's knowing exactly what that base means. Um, I also picked out, some students think the answer to this is D. 20% of students went for D, not enough information. Um, this is students muddling up area with Pythagoras, thinking you need three lengths to be able to work out the area. But of course, the area, you just need the base and the perpendicular height. Which brings us to the final question, the worst answered question, and this is on mean, mean from a frequency table. The mean number of pets is equal to. Right, so let's see if we can get our head around what this table's telling us. Um, zero pets with a frequency of one. That for me, I would imagine, let's imagine this is a class of students and there's a survey being done, how many pets have you got? That's one student saying that they've got no pets. So that's zero pets in total. Then you've got one pet with a frequency of two. That's like two students saying that they each have a pet. So it's one pet and one pet. And then we've got three students, each of whom have two pets. So we have two pets, two pets, two pets. And finally, we've got six students, each of whom have three pets. So we've got three pets, three pets, three pets, three pets, three pets, three pets. So that information contained in that table is just this big, long list of data. Now, how does that help us? Well, it's much easier to work out the mean from a big, long list of data like this than it is from this table. So I'll show you this way of doing it first, and then I'll show you a way we can do it directly from the table. So the mean is equal to the sum of whatever we're, we're dealing with, divided by how many or how much of that data that there is. So let's add these up. Zero plus one plus one, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23, 26. I think it's 26 divided by how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 26 divided by 12. Um, it, there's no fractions in my in my options, so I'm gonna put them in a calculator and do 26 divided by 12, press equals. I've got it to be 13 over six, which comes to 2.16 recurring, which is exactly, well, 
equivalent to 16666. So it's looking like C's our answer. Uh, but you can do this straight from the table. And, and you may have been taught this way. If you add an extra little column onto your table and you call it something like, uh, people like to label this X and like to label that F. So if you call that Fx, frequency times your data, if you do this, one multiplied by zero, you get zero. If you do two multiplied by one, you get two. If you do three multiplied by two, you get six. And if you do six multiplied by three, you get 18. If you add those numbers up, they come to two plus six is eight, plus 18 gives you 26. Now, why are those two things the same? Well, this data here is exactly what we had in our list. You've got no people uh, with, uh, sorry, the, the amount of pets that that one person have is zero. Those two pets are these two here. Those six pets are those six. And those 18 pets are those 18. So you get 26 and you divide it by 12, which is the total of these frequencies. Six plus three is nine, 10, 11, you get 12. So you do 26 divided by 12 and you get 2.16666 pets. So I think the answer to this is C. Um, C's right, but look at that, only 31% of students agree with us. More people think the answer's A. More people are going for an answer of three than are going for the right answer. Where does three come from? Well, let's look at one of these students. You do one plus two plus three plus six to get 12. So they've added up the frequencies to get 12, but you divide it by the total of the numbers, which is four. No, 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 they've gone for the rows. 12 divided by four, which is three. So they're right that you need to add up these frequencies. That's absolutely right but you actually need to divide by those frequencies. And the thing you need to divide by in this case is the total number of pets, which you can either get the long way or you can get the short way. So watch out for that one. Um, so how did you get on with those three questions? I thought they were tricky questions this week, um, but hopefully by talking them through and confronting them, we get better at them and we're on the path to understanding. Um, if you like these and it's giving you a taste of some more, if you go to diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019, you can have a go um, at as many of these question, uh, quizzes as you like. Um, and if you're a teacher and you want to get your students set up on the system so that you can set them these quizzes for them and it'll, the system will mark it for them and so on, it's all completely free. Go to ed.co.uk and sign up for the revision schemes of work or send an email to hello at ed.co.uk for help getting your students on the system. Hope you found that useful. I'll be back with another Beat the Nation soon. Take care and bye for now.